From today onwards, what you are going to listen is a true story. Yours, mine, and the story of all of our lives. A story about a wonderful past, present, and of a wonderful future. This story starts from when there was nothing, and it will end when there will be nothing left from the skies to the earth, and whatever is in between them stars, planets and the sun, time, and all those creations which we call the universe in our language. Today we will start a journey. A journey to explore this universe who created it, what is hidden inside it, and a small planet which we call our world. What has happened in it? What will happen in it? A journey to explore all of that. Our journey starts 14 billion years ago, but why 14 billion years? Have you ever seen the constellation of these seven stars in the night sky? My mother told me about it when I was a child. It's called the Ursa Major, or in Arabic or Urdu it is called. The Dabi Iqbar from this constellation is visible almost every night, and if your eyes were to be the most powerful telescope in the world, then you would have been able to see a tiny red blob above this central star. This is the GMZ 11, the farthest known galaxy so far. Trillions of stars in a form of a mere red blob, and on such a distance from us that the light, which is the fastest thing there is, and left its surface, takes 14 billion years to reach us. It makes at least one thing clear that in our journey, we can go this far at least, but the 99.9985% of this 14 billion years is before the time of humans. Humans emerged only in the last few seconds of this cosmological time scale. Then, how shall we be able to see the birth of the universe? To see this, free yourself from the chains of time and come with me. We will explore all that knowledge which will tell us the true story of all the creation. There is a very common branch of knowledge around us which is called science. And the branch of science is called the cosmogony, meaning the study of the birth of universe, which enabled humans to make a discovery in year 1964. It was such an amazing find that its discoverers Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson were awarded the Nobel Prize. They had discovered a sort of radiation, but the strange thing is that this radiation wasn't coming from any star or any planet, and neither from any of the constellations. It was just like an energy spread through the entire universe. Wherever they looked, they found this energy. It was as if a huge bang or a great expansion created it and spread it everywhere, as if an echo born from a great bang happened billions and billions of years ago. They named this the cosmic microwave background. Today, we know it as the big bang that the sky and earth, and whatever is in between, was all combined together once, and was then separated after a mighty force which today we know as the big bang. But this discovery also came with a big problem, which is known as the horizon problem. The problem is that sometimes we see this energy spread as far as 46 billion light years, and in some parts of the sky, just 0.3 million light years. It can only mean one thing, that the light is traveling on different speeds in the different parts of the universe, which seems impossible. It seems to break all the known laws of physics in the nature as we know it. Light has only one speed, approximately 300,000 kilometers slashes. But if it was true that light travels at different speeds in different regions of the universe, then we must accept that. The time present in those regions will also be passing differently. At this point, one starts to realize that science also has its limitations. But who can blame science? It is only a few hundred years old knowledge. So we must also explore the knowledge that existed before this few hundred years. The knowledge of ancient people. And to explore the knowledge of ancient people, we will have to go far back in time. Much, much far back. It happened 173 years ago. In year 1849, that an archaeologist in Nineveh, called Austin Henry, discovered some clay tablets, 
the tablets that were used thousands of years ago for writing. Austin Henry named those tablets in Numa Elish. It contained a story written on seven tablets three and a half thousand years ago and in which people are talking about the creation of the universe and they say that when there was no sky and when there was no earth, when there was neither any tree nor any bog and it was all just water, there was no human and there was no destiny written. At that time, there was an order from the God. Now this is something very interesting and if we study the entire text of 1,000 lines, we will realize that before anything was created, they speak about the presence of water. Lots and lots of water. Further, it speaks about an eternal garden and the creation of human and its soul which descended from the sky. But probably the most interesting thing in this text is a word from its Greek translation called logos, meaning something that was said. That means when God wanted to create it something, he said something. But what did he say? These tablets do not speak of it. Let's go to another civilization who lived even before them, a civilization that lived 5,000 years ago, the Sumerians. Samra was also a civilization in Iraq, and they too have written in their tablets that there was a supreme being called Namu, who was forever present. Namu created the skies and the earths from the great water, and don't think that the Sumerians are to be taken lightly. Sumerians were the oldest civilization that we know of. In today's world, there are at least a hundred different inventions that we use, which were made by Sumerians, for example. First ever text was written by Sumerians, the first ever clock, first ever irrigation system, and even first ever geometrical system was invented by Sumerians. Let's say that only two civilizations are not enough. So we look at a third civilization, 3,000 years old Egypt, which was a superpower of its time. They too speak of Nun, who created skies and the earths from a massive stormy ocean of water, an ocean of water which was completely hidden in dark. The Greeks, who too speak about the creation from a black sea of water called Okeanos 2,300 years ago. But one can say that these civilizations lived closer to each other and neither many years apart. It is possible that they might have learned these concepts from each other. Then let me take you to civilizations which lived very far from them. The Aboriginal people from Australia. According to the Aborigines, there was a lord of all the souls who was all alone. He created light and gave life to the earth. Even farther from the aboriginals, the Daoist mythology from China, they too speak of a god who separated the huge waters from each other, who placed mountains where they are, and he did it with his knowledge and with the words he said. Korean mythology of Cheon Jiwang after China also speaks about the unified skies and earths at some point in the past. Now we are left with just two continents. So let's have a look into their cultures. Mand, mythology from West Africa, and Yoruba, mythology from Central Africa. Both of them speak about a mighty power that was all alone. And then he created everything from water. Then the last continent of America, where there is an ancient tribe of Cherokee, which is a red Indian tribe, and the islands of Hawaii, which are located in the middle of the oceans, far away from all the other lands. They also talk about skies and earths created from waters in seven days. And lastly, a country in Europe called Finland, where they still talk about Vainamainen, how he created everything from water. You must have noticed by now that I'm telling Yout cultures thousands of miles away and thousands of years apart from each other. But there was a problem in all those mythologies. There were some concepts pretty ridiculous in them, for example, there was a concept of earth bound in golden chains after it was created. Or as in Finland, where a crow comes in and helps Vainamainen to create the universe. We all know that earth is not chained with any golden chain, and neither the creation of this universe was the work of any crow. So I filtered all these ridiculous things and studied these cultures with the similarities they have with each other's, and I noticed that. The common concept is always the same word by word. A mighty force called the God. He was all alone, 
and there was no one else other than him. He was the one who created everything from water, and it happened in six or seven days. Now it seems that the same message was sent in the, all the corners of the world. The messengers were different, yes, and they came in different times, but the message and its sender was always the same. It proves one thing that there is a branch of knowledge besides science in which 85% people of the planet believe somehow, and that knowledge is called religion. But which religion is a big question. There are 3,000 different religions in the world today, and all of them claim to be the right one. Let's have a look into some of the major religions and some of the oldest philosophies. Judaism is indeed one of the oldest religions. It says that the earth was created by God, but this earth is a flat earth, and that it is floating on water, and there is paradise above the sky, and hell under the earth. And then Christianity, the largest religion in the world today, they too say that God created the universe. But according to them, all the stars, sun and everything is rotating around our world. And all of the creation was done just six and a half thousand years ago. And one the seventh day, the God rested. The Greek philosophy is two and a half thousand years old and is still influential today. The Greeks too believed in a godly creation of this universe but they also believed that a goddess called Andromeda flew into the sky and wherever she flew, her milk was spilled and it created a milky starry way. Even today we know this path with the same name, the Milky Way, suggested by the Greeks, then the Hinduism, Jainism, Buddhism, they're all ancient religions, but insist that the universe has no beginning or an end. It was always there and it will always be there. But wait a moment and look back on these concepts. If Judaism is true, then why there is morning in America and evening in Japan at the same time? A flat earth should have morning and evening in all the countries at the same time. And also there are 4,550 satellites revolving around our earth right now which prove that it's not flat. If Christianity is true that it all happened just six or seven thousand years ago, then the light from GNZ 11 was not supposed to reach us, it would have been impossible. Even more confusing is that the God who created all this in six or seven days, why did he get tired? He is supposed to be our might, all powerful. And also there are 50 different versions of the Holy Scripture of Christianity called the Bible. So which version are we supposed to accept? Which version is the truth for one? And if the Greeks were right, then who spilled the milk on these other galaxies, which are actually collections of trillions and trillions of stars? And if the Hinduism, Jainism and Buddhism are correct, that the universe was always there and will always be there, then why are galaxies drifting away from each other's? And on such a high speed, that only our Milky Way is traveling in space at 2.1 million km slash hour. And anything that is traveling in space has a beginning and an end. At this point, one can say that these religions too have their limitations. The message was same at some point, but with time, a lot has changed in them. But I have yet to tell you about one certain religion the only religion which has claimed that there are no lies in it. About 1400 years ago, there emerged a religion in Arab, which is called the Islam. Within only a few years, this religion spread into entire Arabia and eventually in the whole world. And today, Islam is the second largest religion of the world. Islam too has a similar concept of creation in its holy book Quran. For example, Surah Hud. God is the one who created skies and the earth in six days, and his throne was on the waters. It seems as if the message in Quran was sent by the same being, but there is something that sets Quran apart from others. A claim. That was claimed in Quran, a claim in the very beginning of Quran, Surah Bakra. It is a book in which there is no doubt now that is a serious claim, and people like us who want to discover the truth. We will test this claim to be right or wrong. 
Good thing is that this is the only book which has no other versions in the whole world. One book, one version, and one claim neither cosmogony ever made this claim, nor any of the historical tablets or any culture or any other religion. We will also check the concepts of creation of the man who introduced this religion, Muhammad bin Abdullah, which is there in the collection of his sayings called Hadiths. Abu Razin reports that he asked Muhammad, where was our God before the creation of everything? And he replied that God was neither in time or space, and there was nothing above or below him. And then he created his throne on the water. Now these resources seem sound and logical because they are very realistic. They have the concept of time and space. They have the concept of nothingness. So we must look further into these resources and see where do they take us. And to explore it further, our major sources shall be two. The holy book of Islam called Al-Quran and the person who lived in Arabia. The last messenger of all the messenger called Prophet Muhammad. A concept of creation in Quran among all the religions, which is hard to challenge, is in its chapter of Anbiya. That do disbelievers not see that earth and sky were together, and we separated them, and we created all living things from water. Now this seems logical and truthful because, when the sky and the earth must have separated, it would have happened with a mighty force of expansion, the same expansion which is still echoing today. The very same echo which today we know as cosmic microwave background. And this expansion also explains the drifting away of all the galaxies from each other because it is very basic to understand that if you reverse this drifting away of all the galaxies, you will eventually reach the point where all of this were closer, together with each other, unseparated. These are very interesting revelations, but we need more so we will explore this book even further. It is mentioned in the Quran at least five times. Surah Hud, Surah Fakan, Surah Sajda, Surah Kaf, Surah Hadid. That we created the earth and sky in six days. Which days were those? Were they our usual 24-hour days? In fact, this was the very same problem with Christianity, that considering such short time, it was impossible for us to see the light coming from GNZ 11. And there is no explanation of those days or time in the Bible anyway. Do you remember the horizon problem which I spoke about in the beginning, that it seems that time seems to be different in different regions of the universe? But I think science has made a mistake here. They should have named this a revelation instead of a problem, because the concept of time is very clear in Quran, unlike in Christianity or Bible. The chapters of Hajj and Ma'ari tell us very clearly about the changing properties of time. For example, Surah Hajj, a day to your Lord equals your thousand years. Surah Marij, angels and Ru, ascend towards him in a day which equals your 50,000 years. Somewhere a day equals a thousand years and somewhere equals 50,000 years. It seems to be a pretty advanced book which speaks about changing properties of time on such an advanced level, a level which no other religion has ever reached. We can go even further in depth about the concept of creation in Quran. The first verse of the chapter of Al-Anam is, All praise is to Allah who created skies and the earth, and the lights and the darknesses. It seems to be a wonderful verse because, if you look at it, it tells us about more than one skies and also the creation of darkness. But how can the darkness be created? Normally the absence of the light is called darkness, and then the word of kalak for the creation of skies, and the word of jal for the creation of darkness and light. Why so? But probably the most important question that who is Allah? Who is after all the creator of all this? One by one we will look into all this, but first of all, the mystery of darkness. There lived a German astronomer in the 17th century called Heinrich Olber. He raised a question which we know of as Olber's paradox. And he said that if this universe is truly infinite, and if it is expanded everywhere uniformly, then everywhere we should look in the night sky. Our eye should end up on a star and the night sky. 
should have been much brighter than it is. But it is not it is as if something is covering all this light, something dark, something like a night. It has been 300 years today that no one gave a satisfactory answer to Olba's question but for me. I feel that answer lies in the Sura Shams, in Quran, that I swear by the night when she covers. It seems to be a very advanced book, and one desires to explore this book further, to know the secrets of creation.